A picture says more than a thousand words. This is why the world is moving away from text to images and video. We, as makers, can profit from this movement because we get dirt cheap hardware to play with. And if it works with an ESP32, even better. Time for a closer look. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. By the way, my German viewers will find a short announcement at the end of the video. When the first ESP32 camera modules appeared half a year ago, which even promised to do face detection and recognition, I was not very interested. They did not work with the Arduino IDE, got quite hot, and neither detection nor face recognitions did work properly. I got my first module directly from Espressif. Later I found a few other boards with different capabilities. Recently I was the expert on a thesis project where the students tried to develop a solution to count the number of people sitting in a conference room. Their device should be used to optimize office space usage. They used quite clumsy webcams to get pictures and did the people detection either on a Raspberry Pi or, for many rooms, on a powerful server. This sparked my imagination and it is, together with the arrival of the new ESP camera boards, the reason for this video where I will compare the features of the four boards which I have in my lab. Try to get all of them working. Here we will see that we have to overcome the usual obstacles. Try to use the new class of I2S MEMS microphones presented in my last mailbag. Two of the modules have such a microphone included. Try out two sorts of camera lenses. A lot to do, so let's start. First we search for commonalities. All boards are based on an ESP32 chip and all boards have PS RAM. This seems to be necessary for higher resolutions. And all use the same camera. An OV2640, which offers 2 megapixels resolution. Which translates into a maximum of 1600 times 1200 pixels. Too much for most of the pattern recognition applications and sufficient for many surveillance usages. Let's now focus on the differences. The first board I got was the ESP I directly from Espressif. Because it does not use a ready-made ESP32 module, it is very small. It can be programmed by USB and has a reset and a boot button connected to GPIO0. Besides, it offers an I2S microphone and a UFL antenna connector in case you need more Wi-Fi range. As usual, if you want to use the external antenna, you have to change a 0 ohm resistor which connects the ESP32 antenna output with the internal antenna. Instead, it has to connect the ESP32 to the antenna connector. You can also remove the resistor and connect the two paths with a solder point. In addition, this board has a small button on the side, which is connected to GPIO 15. It has no pins, so you cannot easily use it to control other components. I got it for free, but now you can purchase it for around $30. The next bigger board is the ESP CAM. It is a little wider than the ESP I but has less functionality. It has the same camera like all other boards and also PSP RAM. But it has no USB to serial chip and therefore it has to be programmed using an USB to serial adapter. It also has no microphone. But other than the ESP-i, it has 8 spare pins broken out to headers. Its price is below $10. Incredible! The next two boards are from TTGO and follow their strategy to create various boards with different components on it. Like that, you can select which one fits your purpose and you do not need to solder. The first one, I call it the TTGO Black, 
has a SD card reader, a microphone and a large 1.3 inch OLED display on board. It also has battery management for a 3.7 volt Lion battery. It has no pins and it only has a connector with 3.3 and 5 volts and two GPIO pins. You can also attach an external antenna. If you add a connector to this space called BMP280, you can use I2C devices. They did not add the pressure and temperature sensor because these boards get quite hot. A good decision. The price of this board is around $17. The last board, I call it the TTGO White, has instead of an SD card slot a PIR sensor. It also has a microphone but a smaller OLED display. Battery management is also available as well as a reset and a boot button. It uses a standard Wii Rover module but without UFL connector. You have to solder one yourself if you need an external antenna. In addition to the regular change of the zero ohms resistor. The TTGO White also has no pins and the same connector with 3.3 and 5 volt as the black version. The GPIO pins, however, are different. Its price is also around $17. One board is lacking in this comparison. The TTGO with an SMA adapter. I do not have it in my lab, but I include its features in the overview sheet. Its price is around $12. By the way, as you see here, Banggood ships these boards also from the US or the UK. The prices are higher, but maybe shipment is faster. Please let me know in the comments if you already tried. I compiled this feature summary for your convenience. You find the link in the description. The OV2640 needs at least 14 pins. Fortunately, the ESP32 has lots of I.O. pins, but unfortunately, all boards use different pins for the camera and also for the other components. For all boards, we find at least a pinout and sometimes also a schematic, if we search. Unfortunately, the pinout and the reality did not match for the white TTGO. The microphone as well as the PIR sensor pins are wrong on the pinout. I also did not get the camera on this board working. The ESP always crashed. If I removed the camera, it booted. So the chance we do not use the right pin definitions is high. Maybe somebody has more information? Concerning pin definitions, there is only one sketch available for the Arduino IDE. And here you find the pin definitions for some boards. I added the definitions for the TTGO black and white. You just have to uncomment the line with your board and the rest is done automatically. You find the needed define in the overview. If you add your Wi-Fi credentials, you get the IP address to connect with your browser. All boards create a nice web front end where you can stream video or still images. Unfortunately, I did not find any real projects where the ESP camera module does something useful. Maybe you start now to tweak the example file and add something useful or you try to stream the video wirelessly to your Raspberry Pi and do some pattern recognition there using TensorFlow or similar? That is what I would like to do in the future. Please write in the comments if you know any other exciting projects. You get different cameras which easily can be exchanged because they all have the same pinout. You get standard and fish eye lenses and you get long and short connection cables. Like that, you can, for example, mount the camera on the opposite side of the OLED on the TTGO Black. And of course, I took the opportunity to test the MEMS microphones. Fortunately, I got an example sketch which works and shows the sound level. Crazy YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent. This feature could be used to trigger the transmission of video as soon as some noise is detected. For example, if your baby starts to cry. Or you could try to stream also sound in addition to video. Lots of potentials here, too. Summarized, 
we compared the features of the four ports and you got an overview sheet with all the relevant information. After some investigations we got all cameras but one working. I'm sure we will get the last one also working. The I2S MEMS microphones worked and showed a graph of the sound level. They are really very tiny. We looked at the result of the standard and fish eye lenses. Like that you can decide which one fits your needs. All in all, this is still a very new area where we will see a lot of advances in the future. But because these boards are quite cheap, we can already start to play around with them. Please leave your project ideas in the comments. Maybe somebody wants to co-create it with you. One last thing for my German viewers. In September I will be speaker on the UKW Tagung in Weinheim. Maybe you join if you want to chat with me. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You will find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.